Hello folks, welcome back. In this video, we're actually taking a small break from the official Pokemon Players Cup video game regionals qualifier analysis and looking at the caster battle between Adam Dorka and Luke Romy. I hope I'm saying those names right. I hear them quite often. Hopefully, you know, we got them down pat. But it's this is kind of a fun thing that we see now that they're kind of doing at the end of these Players' Cup streams where our kind of our favorite Pokemon personalities get to match up against each other one-on-one -on -one in a bit of an exhibition match. Definitely super fun to see, super exciting. Uh, Adam and Lou did a fantastic job, along with Aaron and Rosemary, who have their own caster battle. And we'll, and we'll see that in some later videos. Uh, and so it's exciting to see this, and we're going to give our best analysis of this very exciting match. So let's go ahead and get into it. Now this is casted by, on the official stream, uh, Aaron, Cybertron, Zhang, and Rosemary Kelly. Certainly check them out. Phenomenal people. All these casters are a big inspiration to me and we love to see it. So we see here Lou is leading with Ndidi F and Pikachu. Ndidi with that Psychic Surge. Pikachu normally has something like that Light Ball, which is a Pikachu exclusive item. And uh, definitely with something like G-Max and Volt Crash, if it decides to take Max, we see uh, Durant and Gothitelle on Adam's side. Gothitelle with that Shadow Tag ability, keeping Lou's Pokemon from switching out. And Durant, a very scary offensive threat. Uh, but it goes down rather easily to stuff like Fire-type moves. Any, Really anything will just tickle it, and it'll go down. But we see here, it does have a super effective move against this Ndidi. Could pose a problem unless there's something like a Focus Sash. We see Adam Dynamaxing Durant. That's... Oftentimes, that's what we see out of this little bug Pokemon. It benefits greatly from these Dynamaxes. And Max Flutterby lowering special attacks is going to be a pretty good safeguard against Pikachu and its G-Max Volt Crash. We see here Lou Dynamaxing what I can only imagine is the Pikachu. Uh, a, gigant a Dynamax Ndidi when there's a Pikachu right there would just kind of be an insult to our good friend and here we see the big chonker, the big glowing tail. And uh, now here's the thing. We do know Pikachu isn't slow. Pikachu is pretty quick, but Durant is probably even faster. Indeedy using follow me, guaranteeing that Pikachu stays nice and healthy. And next up, I imagine, yep, Durant goes ahead and moves. This is going to be a max quake. Definitely wasn't anticipating the Ndidi, and Ndidi manages to survive. Uh, one thing is, is that this will raise, as we see, the special defense of Adam's Pokemon, which could be important. Uh, Pikachu, like I said, is usually a special attacker. This GMAX Volt Crash comes out. It's going to be doing a lot of damage, but I imagine, yep, and we see here Durant survives, likely thanks to that special defense boost. The Paralysis comes out. Gothitelle might be unable to move, but if it can get an attack off, and then we see the paralysis comes out. That could be big. Uh, we saw it was going for what was likely a psychic, which could have taken out Ndidi. Now we have Max Flutterby and Max Quake potentially coming out again. Once again, we see that psychic fake out. Not going to do anything on this one. Helping hand could be important. Could help uh, Durant take out the Pikachu if Pikachu would somehow survive a Max Quake, which I find certainly hard to believe. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see another just follow me out of Ndidi here. Another G-Max Volt Crash will easily take out this Durant, even through another special defense boost. Uh, Ndidi instead going for a helping hand on Pikachu. Pikachu Max Volt Crash now faster thanks to the Paralysis. Gothitelle takes a chunk of damage, but even with the helping hand boost, doesn't go down and the Paralysis on Durant. Gothitelle does get the Psychic off this time, but that is absolutely massive indeed he stays alive fantastic turn for lou adam hardly gets anything off indeed he's still alive a follow me or another helping hand is going to take is make, gonna make sure that at least one of adam's pokemon is going down for sure absolutely phenomenal turn for lou Adam is definitely going to have to be careful trying to come back into this. The good news is that Gigantamax Pikachu, while scary, does have to revert back to normal Pikachu. And while it does, and it, while it is relatively strong, it's a heck of a lot easier to deal with a Pikachu using Thunder or Thunderbolt than a Pikachu using G-Max Volt Crash. Follow me out of Ndidi again. 
making sure Pikachu, as we said before, stays nice and healthy, but it might not matter too much. This G-Max Volt Crash is going to be doing a ton of damage to Durant, taking it out. And we saw there, Adam only really got one turn out of his Dynamax with Paralysis, really taking away both of the others. Gothitelle uses Psychic here, and Didi will finally go down. But what really, what this really means is now Lou gets to bring in another big threat. Now that Pikachu is no longer Gigantamax, we see Scrafty and Rotom Heat in the back for Adam. Uh, if Lou decides to bring in a physical attacker, Scrafty could be dangerous. But Pikachu, with its Lightning Rod ability, could kind of pose some problems for Rotom Heat. But so here we see Rotom, or not Rotom, Scrafty does come in. Another fake out user. This time it can use it. Ninetales comes out now, this time setting up Sun. We can imagine that Lou likely has something in the back along the lines of Charizard, Venusaur, a, a good Sun user. And this Scrafty's Intimidate isn't going to do too much to either of these, to either of Lou's Pokemon as they are both very specially based. But uh, as we said, one one advantage about kind of these Sun setters with Ninetales and even Tor and especially Torkoal is they both get big benefits from the Sun. Their offensive power really going through the roof. And uh, something like a Heat Wave could be absolutely devastating to Adam's side of the field. Here we see double targeting into the Gothitelle, kind of just leaving that Pikachu out. And here we see Ninetales... Whoa! A little bit of a skip in the recording. Ninetales does end up using Heat Wave. Does a good chunk to Gothitelle. A little bit too Scrafty here. Uh, and we see Brick Break coming out of Pikachu. It's super effective, but it doesn't do a ton of damage. Crunch comes out of Scrafty into the Ninetales, as well as Psychic. It's going to do a lot of damage. And Ninetales hangs on. We do know that it is faster than both of Adam's Pokemon. Crunch coming out again. Potentially a Psychic going into Pikachu. Or might as well just go into the Ninetales slot again if Lou potentially switches out. Right now, Ninetales is definitely a lot more of a threat than Pikachu. No offense to uh, the mascot of our fantastic game, of course. We see Gothitelle goes down. Scrafty is pretty low. Grass Knot coming out of Pikachu this time. We'll see how much damage this does. Not enough. Crunch comes out into the Ninetales, takes it down. So now we are down. It's going to be two Pokemon to two Pokemon, a Scrafty and a Rotom Heat versus a Pikachu and something else that Lou has in the back. Lightly able to take advantage of Sun, but this Rotom Heat can take just as much advantage. Here we see Extra Drill coming out. Pikachu's Lightning Rod will keep uh, Thunderbolt from from hitting anything, but right now all all Rotom wants to do is click Overheat. Close combat coming out from Scrafty into the Excadrill Overheat, likely going into either Pikachu or the same target. Uh, as we said, Pikachu isn't really doing too much damage now. It's not that threatening. It's really just this Excadrill Adam has to worry about. The thing is, Excadrill is pretty quick, and a single Rock Slide could probably take down Scrafty, and it's going to do a boatload to our Rotom Heat here. And since Adam doesn't have something like Tailwind or Trick Room to put the speed in his favor, this is definitely going to be a little bit of a problem. Excadrill is a very strong Pokemon. It didn't get hit by Scrafty's Intimidate. Earthquake comes out, no regard for Pikachu, Lou, but Rotom apparently doesn't have Levitate. Oh, my apologies, Moldbreaker not caring about Levitate, and both Scrafty and Rotom Heat go down. So, there we see game one in the books for our casters. We kind of saw just how dangerous Gigantamax Pikachu can be, both big, adorable, and fluffy, reminiscent of its original design, but also terrifying, giving it kind of its own form of speed control, paralyzing both of the opponent's active Pokemon. Definitely put the speed in Lou's favor, paralyzing the Durant, making sure that it only got one actual Dynamax attack off. Absolutely awesome stuff from our casters. From Adam's side, Rotom Heat, it can definitely be threatening uh, with that overheat, especially into something like Excadrill, but that Mold Breaker ability does get a little bit dangerous. 
As we saw though, Exodrill kind of has a tenuous matchup with something like Scrafty and Rotom Heat. And uh, if Scrafty comes in after Excadrill gets an Intimidate off, and if Rotom Heat can get even one Overheat off on Excadrill, things are going to be looking pretty rough. Now, we'll see if Lou has something else in the back to kind of take advantage of the sun. We'll see if Adam has something that can boost the speed tie, or not the speed tie, but boost speed in his favor, something like a Whimsicott with Tailwind or a Trick Room Setter. We did see Gothitelle there. It's not the fastest Pokemon. Trick Room is certainly an option. But let's go ahead and try to get ourselves in to match two. So here we see Lou sending out, as we said before, another Sun you, or something else to utilize Sun. We see that Charizard Whimsicott here. Whimsicott providing Lou's own form of speed control with something like Tailwind. Likely also has something like Taunt, uh, Moonblast, so Protect. We shall see. Uh, and here we see Gothitelle coming out again, though, and we and Adam brought Rotom again. Good news for Rotom this time. It has a pretty positive matchup against Charizard. As we see Thunderbolt going into the Charizard here, this is going to be doing a ton of damage, even if Lou does Gigantamax it. Um, Gothitelle keeping both these Pokemon from switching out, though. This Charizard has to face Rotom Heat. Whoop! This Charizard is going to have to face the Rotom Heat threat without being able to switch or get any help from people in the back. Now, Whimsicott does have access to Sunny Day. We'll see if that gets set up here, but we do know that Adam has Fake Out on Gothitelle. It didn't get used last game, but this game, it could be relatively important. Whimsicott usually has something like a Focus Sash, and uh, a Fake Out is certainly a great way to break that. Now we see here, Charizard is not Gigantamax, it is only Dynamax, so there is not gonna be any G-Max Wildfire here, but it, that does mean it can set up its own sun if it wants to. Whimsicott does get flinched. Charizard Max Airstream coming out. This kind of in place of Tailwind boosted speed does a little under 50% to the Gothitelle. Uh, could be important moving forward. But this Rotom gets a Thunderbolt off, puts Charizard below half health. That is certainly scary. But now Charizard and Whimsicott are going to be faster than guaranteed, uh, even though they likely already did outspeed Adam's Pokemon. Now they definitely do. And if Adam decides to make any switches, it's going to be hard to deal with a speedy Charizard if this Rotom Heat goes down. Whimsicott, of course... Could still be going for a Tailwind. We see Sunny Day coming out. As we said, it does have access to the move. Prankster Sunny Day giving Charizard a boost of its own. G Max Flare, or not G Max, but Max Flare here. Gonna do a ton of damage into the Rotom Heat. It is resisted. Doesn't quite kill. Oh, that might that might be a roll, and that might have mattered. The Thunderbolt taking down Charizard here. Uh, before the Dynamax is actually up. Now, what's dangerous is Adam still does have his Dynamax, and we know that there is some that like there is a Durant in the back. We'll see if Lou has something that can deal with it now. Whimsicott stays alive through a critical hit. Psychic. Uh, let's see what Lou decides to bring in here. Hopefully, it is something that can be doing a good chunk of damage to both these Pokemon. We see Nine Tails coming out. No need for the Drought ability, but as we said, it can take advantage of the Sun pretty well on its own with a decent special attack stat, and we saw that Heat Wave attack beforehand. Uh, Gothitelle, considering going for Protect, the longevity wouldn't be bad, but Adam, no. Just wants to take out the opposing Pokemon. Who needs defense when your opponent's Pokemon just can't attack you because they are all KO'd? Here we see Whimsicott's Moonblast coming out, that Tailwind effect, or that Max Airstream definitely coming into effect, but ta not having Tailwind set up might be dangerous later in the game as Ninetales doesn't have the boost. Now it is faster than Gothitelle, it does a chunk of damage with Dark Pulse, but it doesn't actually take it out. Psychic comes through into the Whimsicott, there isn't going to be any Tailwind for the Pokemon in, uh, in, in the back half of Lou's team. Durant, and we see here there is both Durant and Scrafty. Scrafty with that fake out could be huge. Durant though, Life Orb, Hustle, absolutely massive amounts of damage coming out of it with a huge attack stat. But there is a Ninetales on the field which could be extremely threatening. Here we see Excadrill coming out. But this time the Scrafty does come in with an Intimidate this time. 
Mold Breaker on Excadrill triggers, but that doesn't really matter too much. There's not any redirections on Adam's side as we saw. Rotom Heat is already down. Helping Hand coming potentially coming out of the Goth Tail into the Scrafty. Scrafty has options here, but Close Combat seems to be like the one that makes the most sense with a Helping Hand, or otherwise a Fake Out could be in the works, making sure that Excadrill can't actually get any, any attacks off that are too threatening. Now, out of Lou's side, Excadrill we know has Earthquake, likely also has something like Iron Head, uh, potentially Rock Slide and Protect. Uh, those moves are all quite good. We don't want to be, we likely don't want to be seeing an Earthquake out of this because Ninetales would most certainly go down to that. Ninetales, and as we see here, it is a relatively important Pokemon. Heat Wave comes out, takes out Gothitelle, a decent amount of damage to Scrafty, but Ninetales is how Lou is going to be able to deal with Durant. And, uh, Durant is quick. Now, the main thing is that Ninetales has to survive a single attack by Durant, and Adam can still Dynamax that thing. That's going to be rough. I don't know if a Ninetales is going to be able to survive. As we see here, a Max Rockfall, a Max Rockfall from this Durant. Max Rockfall, Rockfall is also going to be doing a couple things. It's going to get rid of Sun, set up Sand, and provide a small special defense boost for Durant, as it is a Steel type. And that all could factor into, while Durant isn't the bulkiest Pokemon, Ninetales Heatwave might not be able to do quite enough to a Dynamax Durant. But who knows? Durant, like we said, <clears throat> we see 266 hit points here. Well, that's not quite enough. We see, actually, Ectodrill has another Ground-type attack. It is high horsepower, but it has a chance to miss, and it misses the Scrafty. This could be huge. Ninetales... Could be at one. It has a Focus Sash. We see that the sand is going to go up. Ninetales is going to go down at the end of this turn due to the sand. Ninetales Heat Wave comes out. Scrafty is alive. Durant goes down. We'll see here. Scrafty close combat into Excadrill. It might just take it out. If it doesn't, though, we saw Excadrill is faster and it won't have any issues clicking Earthquake. Close Combat takes down the Excadrill. Now this Ninetales is going to go down to Sand, and that's going to be it for Lou's team. We are now going to be at 1-1 one and one in this caster battle. Wouldn't have it any other way. Coming down to the second Pokemon in game number two. All right. Well, that was certainly an interesting game. We saw there Lou's... Uh, Lose Excadrill actually has both Earthquake and High Horsepower, but we saw that that small chance High Horsepower has to miss came into play here. If that had gotten off onto Scrafty, might have been a completely different game, like maybe even a clean 2-0 by Lou. Maybe we'll see Lou go back to uh, good old Gigantamax Pikachu. We didn't even see it come in this game, uh, but we did see, what we did see is... Uh, we saw fake out pressure actually coming out and we saw the Intimidate hitting the Excadrill. Might have been important if Excadrill had even gotten a chance to hit something effectively. But enough of that. Let's go into game three. I'm excited to see what they have for this third match. We didn't see any speed control out of Adam in game number two. Let's see if, we bring, if he brings any for game three. We do know that there is Sunny Day Whimsicott on Lou's side. Very much a Sun team. We will see what everybody brings to match number three. All right. So Lou sends out very similar to game one in DD and Pikachu. Adam this time sending out Whimsicott does have speed control now alongside the Durant. Psychic Terrain comes out, but there's no really priority damaging moves that are coming out of Adam's side at the moment. Unless this terrain can stick around for Scrafty and Gothitelle to come out. Tailwind here, we see it will happen. This terrain's going to be even faster. Uh, perhaps even a par Paralyze from a G-Max Volt Crash won't be enough to keep it behind Ndidi and Pikachu in speed tiers. The Dynamax coming out right away from Adam with the Durant. Saw it didn't go too hot in game one. Uh, in game two, it all... it. Basically took down the nine tails with a rock fall due to the sand, but it went down itself. We'll see if this Durant can actually stick around for a few turns. Blue likely Gigantamaxing that Pikachu. What else would you rather have it do? It's not too weak. It's not the strongest in its babby form, but when it gets to absolute 
unit size, it can definitely be terrifying with that G-Max Volt Crash causing paralyzing. Uh, and Didi here, Helping Hand and Follow Me, both reasonable moves to make here, uh, even Protect. And Didi though, going for the Follow Me. Adam, however, learning from game one, and uh, we see, we're going to be seeing a max flutter by coming out. Whimsicott using that tail when making sure that they are, the Adam's team is going to be fast no matter what. This max flutter by comes out, hits the Ndidi, takes it down. We know it doesn't have focus sash because nine tails does. And now Pikachu's attack, special attack drops due to max flutter by. It's not going to be doing nearly enough damage to take out this Durant. And now Whimsicott is still free to roam around. Another Mac G, uh, G Max Volt Crash will take down Durant for sure, but a paralysis here, a full paralysis specifically, could be key to Lou winning this game. Now, there is no sun up, but Lou sends out Ninetales, a super strong Pokemon against Durant and Whimsicott, a heat wave going to be doing plenty of damage, but now Adam has two attackers that probably outspeed Ninetales. And if Ninetales gets hit twice, it's going down and it's gonna be up to Pikachu to take out one of these Pokemon. However, now here's the thing, if Ninetales can survive one hit and get an attack off, it's going to be huge. Moonblast comes out, deals damage to Ninetales, and uh, from what we saw in that last game, a Max Rockfall is going to just delete our wonderful Fox friend and now it's going to be setting up sand. A little bit of chip damage at a time. Pikachu will be able to get an attack off, likely going into Durant again, but a full paralysis would have been nice on either of Adam's Pokemon. That life orb life loss isn't really going to be doing, isn't going to matter too much. This is G-Max Volt Crash comes out. No new Pokemon to paralyze. Durant goes down. Pikachu is now going to be on its third turn of Dynamax. It gets one more max move. Adam's Whimsicott, if it had Focus Sash, that Sash is now broken. We see Scrafty and Rotom in the back for Adam. Very similar to what we saw last game. And now, Lou only has one Pokemon in the back. Let's see what she brought. A Charizard isn't going to be doing too much here, especially against the Rotom Heat. Uh, but we do see the Excadrill now. However, there is Tailwind up. Rotom Heat is going to be pretty quick. And we know Excadrill doesn't have the speed boost ability in the sand. It only has Mold Breaker, so it doesn't get a speed boost currently. Rotom Heat likely can outspeed it, and if this overheat kills, it's going to be tough stuff for Lou. Whimsicott does get the full paralysis. Rotom Heat overheat comes out, and Excadrill just goes straight down. It is a Pikachu versus the world right now. We'll see what happens. And it comes out with a Max Geyser. This could be big. It does set up rain. Pikachu potentially has thunder in the back, but Rotom Heat doesn't go down. That Max Flutter by putting it from Durant on that first turn, putting in so much work. Good news is that this rain makes sure Rotom Heat isn't gonna be doing quite as much damage with Overheat, especially after that special attack drop. But uh, this Pikachu has a lot of work to do before this game is over. Another full paralysis would be nice. A Rotom Heat using Dark Pulse, eh, that's probably going to be stronger right now. Especially in the rain. Rotom using Dark Pulse, Pikachu's going to have to take it. Pikachu d does handle it pretty well. Moonblast though comes out, it's going to be doing even more damage. A paralysis there would have been huge. And Pikachu goes down well there we have it whoop there we have it folks game number three of the caster battle i don't know why my i my i just do this when i'm cold and for some reason my sleeves go up which only makes me more cold but you know what here we are but game three done from our caster battle absolutely phenomenal play from uh, both Adam and Lou. We kind of saw there the power of G-Max Pikachu, but Tailwind from Whimsicott was able to offset it in game three even stronger. Uh, we kind of got to see Ninetales though. It's not a Pokemon you normally see featured, but it has a great Durant matchup as we saw, just takes it out 
in or out of sun. Absolutely phenomenal. We did kind of get to see Rotom Heat and Scrafty in action as well. Scrafty's role kind of taken over by Incineroar, but it has great offensive power with stuff like close combat. Just absolutely phenomenal to see. We also got to see something like Gothitelle's we got to see Gothitelle. I haven't seen we haven't seen Gothitelle at all. And uh that's super cool to see with these awesome caster battles at the end of these streams. Kind of for fun. Get to see our favorite players and our favorite casters and personalities mash up against each other and have a bit of fun themselves. But thank you so much for watching this video. Tomorrow we are going to be going into the next game uh, of the Players' Championship, and I believe we're going into week number two. So that'll be quite fun to see, and uh, we'll see who all made it into that second week. Thank you all so much for watching. Be safe, be smart, make wise decisions, and have a fantastic day.